Anger is bad for the soul. <laughs> it's Fez, right? Yes. Yeah. Get out. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best red insults on that 70s show. Dear Lord, would it kill you to give the Packers a winning season? <laughs> Amen. Oh, and uh, watch over my loving family, blah, blah, blah. For this list, we're taking a look at Mr. Foreman's most hilarious insults from across all eight seasons of this beloved sitcom. Which retorts left you wheezing from laughter? Did it make the list? Share with us in the comments below. Number 10. Red can get a table. Excuse me. What happened to the lion's head? Burned down. Five dead. Real sad. Welcome to Blanigan's. May I take your name? We all have dealt with the frustration of getting a dinner table. However, this moment made us wish we had Red in our own lives. He accidentally takes Kitty to a rowdy family restaurant, originally believing it was a fancy establishment. But it turns out the old spot burned down. Sticking to his guns about the restaurant being good, he approaches the hostess, only to learn there's a two-hour wait for a table. Even after bribing her, he still doesn't quite get the result he wants. What follows is one of the most frightening remarks Red has ever uttered. But hey, it worked. Here's 20 bucks. All right, we'll have something in about 15 minutes. You don't want this place to burn down twice, do you? <laughs> All right, we have something right now. Number nine, the Buttocks Motel. How dare you boys smoke up my house when you know how hard I work to keep it smelling lemony fresh. In the finale of the seventh season, Red and Kitty find out that Eric and his friends have been smoking marijuana in the basement all these years. And as you can imagine, they're outraged. But more on that later. In the season eight premiere, we get more insight into what happened after Eric left for Africa. And let's just say Hyde and Fez got an earful. I am just glad that we caught you boys before this became an every day thing. While Kitty is more tame despite her anger, Red delivers a brilliant line for all viewers to remember. You morons just hung vacancy signs on your asses and my foot's looking for a room. What they don't seem to fully grasp is that this was really an everyday thing, but hey, maybe it's better that way. Number eight, career day with Red Foreman. We'll have to have a talk with him. His mom sure as hell won't do it. And somebody's gotta beat some sense into that idiot. When Hyde decides to go to New York, an alarm bell seems to go off in Kitty and Red's heads. The two discuss their worries with each other before sitting him down to warn him about the troubles he may face in the Big Apple. Without that sheepskin, you are nothing. And not the kind of nothing that you are now. And even lower. More pathetic nothing. As Kitty goes on about crime-riddled streets and danger around every corner, Red seems more focused on what Hyde would do for work. According to Mr. Foreman, it's not just the competitive job market Hyde needs to worry about. It's also his lack of experience and credentials. What are you going to put on your resume? Dumbass. Yes, Hyde, a good resume is important. Number seven, distance equals love. Seems like uh, Uncle Paul broke his ankle and... Uh... She's going to church with us today. <clears throat> no, she's not. Look, we all know certain relatives can be hard to deal with, especially in your later years. After a less than ideal trip to church, Red spends most of his Sunday hiding, leaving Eric to deal with his mother. After all, he'd rather be doing, well, anything else. Hey, Dad. Damn it, Eric. <laughs> Don't sneak up on a person like that when they're doing this. Once he's finally found by his son, he explains the simple concept of loving from a distance. Eric, I love your grandmother very, very much. I just can't talk to her or spend any time with her. Did I mention that I'm in there rubbing her feet? There are probably some people who can relate to what he's saying. But still, something tells us that Red's philosophy wouldn't translate too well if people try to apply it in daily life. Number six, syrup is a man's best friend. We're having a girl's night out. I need you to bag all the almonds and tie them with a bow. <laughs> Why me? Because I said so. But I, I don't want to. Well, you have to. Oh, you, you, you make me crazy. Oh, you, you make me crazy. We understand that Bob isn't exactly the most tolerable of television neighbors. He tends to act like the Barney Rubble to Red's Fred Flintstone, bumbling, a bit dense, but overall joyful in his naivety. Things that wouldn't quite be the same without him, or the pair's funny dynamic. I'm done with this. <laughs> this is not man's work. I mean, if Kitty wanted me to shoot the almonds at some communists, that I could do. 
Oh, you're a big talker now that she's gone. In a season six episode, Red tells his neighbor about Kitty's habit of silent breakfasts when she's mad at him. One such occasion left Red so desperate for conversation that he bought a bottle of Mrs. Butterworth's. I had to buy a bottle of Mrs. Butterworth's just so that someone would smile at me. <laughs> you can always call me Red. Yeah, I'd rather talk to Sir. This wasn't the point of their interaction, but Bob can't have felt great after learning he came after syrup in Red's cool list. Number five, when idiocy realizes itself. I don't like parties. Cause I'm a big, bald party pooper. holiday spirit, some of the gang throws a huge party, loaded with all the refreshments a 70s teen world want at Hyde's place. But the real memorable moment doesn't occur until afterward. Indeed, things come crashing down when Kelso and Eric return to the latter's home and his hangover starts. As soon as Eric mentions his headache, his father delivers one of the most savage lines we've ever heard. My head hurts. <laughs> That's your brain trying to comprehend its own stupidity. We're just shocked that Red isn't as furious about this as he usually is about other things. Well, Eric's probably suffered enough anyway. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Dumbass. Number four, Red's final wish. We're not sure what it is about this episode, but Mr. Foreman was at the top of his game, having made a brutal remark about Bob earlier. Yeah, but you know what they say about Bob. He's stupid! However, the best insult comes when Red throws a party, finally returning to his grouchy and condescending ways. After some out-of-character behavior, he makes a toast for the ages. And I just want to say, when my time comes, I want to be buried face down, so that anyone who doesn't like me can kiss my ass. No one else seems to share his point of view, until Kitty's reaction convinces them all to laugh along too. Hey, we have to say that we kind of agree with Red on this one. Life is too short to spend it with people who annoy you. I, I just want to spend it with people I really, really love. Like you. And, uh, well, mostly just you. Number three, the square root of X. In order to spend a weekend away with Donna, Eric lies to his parents about tutoring Kelso for a few days. Looks like I'm gonna spend the weekend with Kelso. Tutor my math. <laughs> really? Yes, it's a believable story, but Red and Kitty know better. They immediately start to interrogate their son about what he and his friend will supposedly be doing. Eric keeps up his facade, but his dad has one last thing to say. But I'll be watching the news. <laughs> and if anything is vandalized, or explodes, or catches on fire, X is gonna equal me kicking your ass. Knowing what Kelso and Eric are capable of on their own, one can understand why he would make such a statement. And yeah, it gets better when he finds out what his kid is really up to. Eric! Yeah! <laughs> hey, it's Big Red! <laughs> Number two, Eric's luck explained. Eric made out with Kate. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Your son is a whore. <laughs> we can all probably agree that Donna is, for the most part, good for Eric. So imagine the disappointment Red must feel when he learns that Donna is mad at his son because he cheated on her. When confronted by his father, Eric tries to place the blame on sheer bad luck instead of taking responsibility for his actions. Donna is such a sweet kid. How could you do this to her? I don't know. You know, it seems like bad things are always happening to me. Like I have bad luck or something. Red can clearly see through his child's nonsense and says the most brutally honest thing possible. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> Now fix it. In all seriousness, this was perhaps the greatest bit of fatherly advice he's ever given, wrapped in a perfectly red package. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. 
a typically red greeting. How would you describe Eric and his friends? Calm down. Look, what could he possibly do to us at dinner? Ah, good. All the half-wits are here. <laughs> Manners, Eric. That's one way to get your son moving. Eric, I thought I told you to wash up for dinner. I know it's difficult to hear with your head up your ass. Eric's Miss America quote. Only Red could tell his child how generic that sounded. Well, <clears throat> I believe that everyone's political opinion is valid and worth hearing. <laughs> well, that's, that's perfect, Eric. Use that line when you run for Miss America. <laughs> Waffle war. Every dad wins the ego in the end. Hey, Lego my ego. <laughs> hey, Lego my foot in your ass. Sleep kicking is a thing. If Red needs more options, there's also sleep punching and sleep headbutting. What is going on? I'm sleepwalking. <laughs> And I'm about to be sleep kicking your ass. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the reddest red. Can someone shove a vacuum up your nose and suck out your last lonely brain cell? Before Eric finally leaves for Africa, he and the boys have one last smoking session in the circle. There's just one problem they forgot about. Red and Kitty are still home. The former character catches them in the act and orders them to march upstairs. What follows is arguably the angriest Red we've ever seen. Yeah, Kitty isn't happy either, but his fury is what makes the entire scene pure gold. I wish I had 2,000 feet so I could put 500 of them in each of your asses! His outrage is made all the better by the fact that the boys are impaired and hallucinating while being lectured. And you, wipe that stupid smirk off your dopey, dope face. If this had been the series finale, it would have been the perfect way to cap things off, thanks in no small part to Red. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.